Hello and welcome everybody. This is Rogan from graphicinmotion.com and it is tutorial time game. So let's check out what we are going to create together today. Are you ready to take your Houdini skills to the next level? Join me on an exciting four part journey where we will create a stunning scene of a strawberry splashing into liquid chocolate. In the first part, I will guide you through the step-by-step -step process of modeling a lifelike strawberry using Houdini's powerful procedural modeling workflows. You will learn how to create intricate details with ease and precision. But that's just the beginning. In the second part, I will show you how to art direct splashes in balloon fluid simulations. Together we will construct a flexible setup that allows you to manipulate the shape and the velocities of your chocolate splash. In part 3, you will discover powerful and easy to use techniques for creating custom velocities using simple VEX commands that take your simulation to the next level. Once you have mastered these methods, you will have all the tools you need to confidently art direct your simulations. But that's not all. In the final part, I will provide an in-depth breakdown of how to light, shade and render your masterpiece. And the best part? The first part is completely free, giving you a taste of what's to come. And for the rest of this amazing series, please head over to my Patreon, where you will find all the additional content waiting for you. Just click the link in the video description and join our community today. And now let's jump right into Houdini and let's get started. First of all, I want to create a geometry node as always. And this will be our strawberry. So let's dive inside and let's start with a sphere. That's the basic shape of our strawberry. And I wanted to change it to a polygon and increase the frequency, let's say to 24 for now, that we have a bit of geometry to work with here. If you want to see the wireframe, then you press Shift W and this will activate the wireframe. Now I want to create the basic shape of the strawberry by using a taper. So let's bring in a taper, linear taper and set this up. If we press this icon or press just enter above our viewport, then you see the control handles for the taper. And we also see that it is oriented the wrong way. So here in our settings, we can change the capture direction from Z to Y. That's better. And if I just change the taper now to see what it is doing right now, you see it is not grabbing the whole model here. So we'll just shift the capture origin down here. So let's shift this down until it captures the whole model, something like that. That looks quite good. Now we'll set the taper back to one. And I want to use this enable ramp here. And with this ramp now, I can control the size of my tapering. So you see, I can bring the first point down and this will squish it at the bottom. And I can also make this bigger. So it's a little bit easier to set up something like that. And then we can maybe bring in something like that here. I will create a very, very rough shape now, just very rough. And I will later on refine this a bit. So let's do something like that. That doesn't look too bad. And to make these curves here a little bit smoother, we just select all of these points that we created and then we right click and set the interpolation to maybe Catmull ROM. Let's take a look at that. I could also set them to Bezier. Let's try this out. I will set it to Bezier for now. And now we can shift it a little bit more, make it a bit smoother. This whole tapering here. So now I added a point. I don't want this point here. So let's just get rid of it. And let's smooth this out a little bit more. Something like that is fine. Okay, I think that this is a good base shape for our strawberry. And I also have a reference image here. So let's take a look at that. That's my reference and I want to create something like this approximately. We will take a look at this reference a few times during this tutorial. Now, in Houdini, usually there is no real sculpt tool. So if we use the standard sculpt node that is available, this one here, um, yeah, this is pretty much really uh, useless. You see, you can just paint an offset on polygons and uh, it's really not useful to shift around points. There is the option to use the soft edit. So if I, for example, grab a point here, 
on my sphere and then press T on the keyboard. This will bring up an edit tool and then I can use the soft radius and push this around. But this is not really intuitive because I cannot go in here and grab points randomly and push them around. There is one tip that I actually found out when watching a video from Paul Estevez, so big shout out to him here, that's really a secret in Houdini, how you can activate an additional sculpt tool that is hidden. I don't know why it's hidden, because it's actually not that bad. We have to go to Windows and then you go to HScript text port. And in this HScript text port, you put in exactly what you see here. OP, unhide, sop, shot, sculpt, and then you press enter. That's what you have to do. After you did that, you can come into your node editor and then the node shot sculpt will be available. And this is actually a very cool sculpting tool. It's not perfect, but let's take this tool and you see immediately that this is more like we expect sculpting to work. So I can change the radius with my mouse wheel. And now with the grab brush selected, I can just come in here and start pushing around these points on my strawberry. So let's reset all the changes because this was not very good. And this is how I can now form a little bit of a more interesting shape. So first of all, what I want to do is that I want to make my strawberry a little bit flatter. So it should not be totally round as it is now. I just want to change the basic shape of it a little bit. And I'm very careful because I do not want to do too much changes. Don't want to go too crazy. I'm working with quite big brushes, as you can see. The next step I want to do is I want to flatten out this top area a tiny bit because these are usually a little bit flatter. Let's push this down a bit. Let's see, and I can decrease the radius a bit and push this down in the middle here, just to create a very basic shape. And that looks actually quite nice. Something like that. Now we could come in here, make it smaller even, and put in some bumps here that is not that even. That's also something that strawberries often have. Something like that, just to make it a little bit natural. Okay, and now I want to bring in some of these edges down here to create a little curve down here. Really not too much, everything is subtle here. So let's see how this looks like. And I said uh, I want to model a strawberry fully procedural, but actually it's not true because this work, this step is not procedural. As you can see here, this is a manual step. You could also do it by adding a mountain node, and we'll do this in the next step, and change this shape a little bit more. And then you have a procedural control here instead of doing it only manual. So I will just finish this strawberry quickly. Okay, so before I totally mess it up, let's say that this is okay for me now. And now I can add in a mountain node, as I said, because I can change this shape a little bit more to create some variation here. And I want to make sure that the element size is quite big. So something like maybe around three for now. Let's see. And I want the roughness to be smaller, maybe 0 0.2. And now if I change the offset here, this should now deform my strawberry, as you can see here. And this will just give us a little bit. It will, of course, take away some details, but it will give us some variation. Um, in case if you, for example, want to do some wedging operations, if you're familiar with that, then you could use that to change the offset and create different shapes and different strawberry shapes that are just based on your basic sculpt. I think that I probably put in too much details with the sculpt now, but you see that it generally works that you can create different shapes here. So let's just do a very tiny offset here just to create or manipulate this a little bit so that we get a bit of a different shape that we like. Let's see, maybe the amplitude is too high, so I will turn down the amplitude a tiny bit. And let's say I want to go to one point, uh, 0 0.15, and now let's take a look what the offset does. Yeah, now it's a little bit better, a little bit more controllable. And yeah, this is a very nice berry. It's a little bit fluffier, a little bit thicker, and 
doesn't look too bad. So if I take a look at my reference, you see, not too bad. So let's use this one for now and let's continue. Now, the most important thing on a strawberry are, of course, the dents and the seeds, as you can see here. And there are multiple ways how you can model something like this in Houdini. In my case, I decided to create the dents using a Boolean operation, but you could also do it with volume modeling. And actually, I will show you both techniques. I will model the dents of the seeds with Boolean operations on the geometry, and then I will add some detail on the top here with volume modeling operations. So let's do that. This is my base shape, so I can just create a box and say this is my base shape. And I can colorize it maybe red because it's a strawberry, so let's colorize it red. Now I want to scatter some points on my geometry, but I do not want to scatter points everywhere because we do not have dents and seeds everywhere. On the top here, we do not have any seeds and any dents. So I want to create a density attribute that I can then use to control my scattering. Let's create a wrangle here, a point wrangle, an attribute wrangle that runs over the points, that is. And let's just create a density attribute with the value of 1. So float at density is 1. That's it. Now we have a density attribute with a value of 1. Now I want to paint some values into this density attribute and therefore I can use an attribute paint node. That's pretty handy. I could also do it uh, in different options. I could do something like uh, grouping and stuff, but the paint node is really good. And I want to make sure that I paint on an attribute that is not called mask, but it is called density. And now you see it changes to red, and that means we have a value of 1 throughout the whole object. That's what the wrangle here set up, so let's call this set density. Now, and not density, density. Okay. And with this now we go to the brush, and instead of the FG float is set to 1, we can set it to minus 1, because this will actually erase values. And if I make this a little bit bigger and start painting, you see now I can erase something up here, just an area like this, and I'm already satisfied with that. So I do not want to have any seeds in this area. I could make it a bit bigger, but I think that's okay. If you want to smooth it out, you can lower your brush size and then press shift and smooth out the area around here a little bit. Not nearly necessary in this case, but just that you know how this works. Okay, this should be fine. Now I can use this density attribute to scatter some points. And I do not want to use the standard scatter node that we are already familiar with. I want to use the scatter and align tool. Scatter and align has a few more features than the standard scatter tool, and it's very useful in our case. Now we want to make sure that my density attribute is actually recognized by this scatter node. And therefore we have to change this to by density. And here I can now use the density attribute and type in the name of our attribute, which is just density. Now with the density scale, I can increase the amount of points. And yeah, you probably cannot really see them, but a few white points are now here on my strawberry. Let me quickly change the background to dark, and then it's a little bit more obvious what's going on. Turn off the grid. Yeah, here you see my points. Should be visible on the screen recording. Yeah. I did some research and a strawberry actually has between two and 300 seeds. So let's take a look what we have to put in here to get a value between two and 300. I put a density scale of 150 in. And actually the coverage is also quite interesting. As you can see here, it also changes it a bit. So if you put it down to lower values, then you get this irregular pattern, which we do not like because the strawberry is covered uh, very regular. And so we set the coverage to one. And the density to 150, the density scale, and now we get around 400 points. So it's probably a little bit too much. Let's set it down to 125. Let's see, now we are on 335. I will go down a little bit lower just to make this a bit realistic. And now we are on 286 points, and that's fine. So this is good for my strawberry. Okay, so now I have my points in place. But now I need some geometry to actually cut out of my strawberry mesh. So let's do that, and we can call this density distribution. And now we will create some geometry that we can use to cut out these dents. Therefore, we will use a sphere. 
And right now I will just put in a copy to points. So let's do copy to points without changing anything here for now. And let's shift the sphere over here because the input for the geometry is on the left side and the points here. And you see what I get now. Now I get these spheres just copied onto my points. And of course, the shape is not really good now. So let's go to the sphere, change it first of all to polygon and maybe increase the frequency to three so that we have a bit more here. And now we can just shape this a little bit. But before we shape them, let's actually come in here and do pack an instance. Then this is a little bit easier to calculate. And now we can do our Boolean operation. So let's add in a Boolean operation here. And on the left side, I want to put in my strawberry from the mountain node here. And on the right side, I can put in my seeds or my dents, I should say. And let's actually shift these over a bit so that this looks a little bit nicer, like so. And now we can just alt click and drag this out. So it's a bit more organized. Okay. So if I activate this Boolean now and I've subtract A to B and actually, yeah, I made a mistake because I cannot use pack an instance because then the Boolean won't work anymore. So you have to turn this off, sorry. And now you see we get these dents and the dents are now, yeah, a little bit too, for my taste, they are a little bit too regular. They are round and that's not really the look that we want. Of course, I will smooth that out later using uh, volume modeling techniques. But for now, I want to make sure that these are a little bit more shaped like our seeds, so a little bit longer. And let's see which axis I actually have to manipulate here. So I'm not sure, but I think it is the set axis. So let's see if I set this to one, what's happening then? Yeah, that's the right axis, but the scale value is way too much. So I set it to 0 0.6, maybe even a bit higher, 0 0.7. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. And now it's very handy that we actually have this scatter and align node because you see that the orientation is not right. If we go back to the reference image, you see that these seats are all orientated along the, the, the y-axis in our case here, so this axis. And I also want to mimic this here with my dents and later on, of course, also with my seats. So to do that, let's go to the scatter and align. And there is this very handy alignment tool here. And we can set up a target and I want to do a custom target and just set this to a value, let's say maybe three on Y. Actually, it also works with one, doesn't really matter. It just means that all of these are now pointing to the Y uh, direction, as you can see here. And that's exactly what we have on our strawberry in our reference. Okay, so the dents look good. We will see how they look like when I turn this into a volume and I can come back here and change this anytime anyway. So let's do that. Let's start the volume modeling process and let's do a VDB from polygons here. So let's bring this in, VDB from polygons. And of course, now we have to lower the size of my voxels here to get more details. And just to make sure that I create a nice mesh, I will convert this immediately, convert VDB. So we'll convert it back to polygons just to see what we get to determine which resolution we need. And you see actually that this doesn't look too bad. Um, we probably do not have enough resolution. And I also, of course, do not like the shape now, but I will smooth that out. And yeah, we will make this a little bit more beautiful in a moment. What I can say for now is that I need more resolution on my VDB. So let's go in here and let's set it to 7, 0.75 maybe. Let's see whether this is enough. Um, this could be enough. I don't want to go too crazy on this strawberry. So let's see. But what I definitely want to do is to scale these dents also on the X radius. And I want to scale them down a little bit here. So let's set it to 0.4 so that these get a little bit smaller because this is actually what we also have on this strawberry, if you take a look. Um, they have a bit of a longer shape like these seeds. And now we will bring in some smoothing operations and we will see how this affects the look of our dents. So let's bring in a VDB smooth SDF of course, between the 
Polygon VDB from Polygon and the Convert VDB. And you see immediately that this changes it quite a bit. And we lose a lot of detail when doing this operation. So instead of the mean value, we could use the mean curvature flow. And this will just keep a little bit more of our details here. And this actually doesn't look too bad. So I think it's quite good. Maybe my dents are a little bit too big. So let's go here to our sphere and let's set the overall scale maybe to 0 0.9. Let's see what this does. Mm, this looks maybe a little bit better. Uh, I'm not even sure, maybe put it back to 0 0.59. Let's see. Yeah, I think it doesn't look too bad. So if we compare it to our original strawberry, if we put in some seeds, then this could work. Um, I will test one more thing if I make it a bit bigger on the y-axis and a bit smaller here, whether this creates more realistic looks. Yeah, I think that this is a little bit better. So let's see, let's take a look at that. Could this be a strawberry? Yeah, in my opinion, it definitely could be a strawberry. Okay, so the strawberry is finished. If we take a look at the polygon count, let's see what we have here. Um, we have about 76,000. Yeah, that's fine. You could use a poly reduce if you want, but later on, before I save these to this, I will create a high resolution and a low resolution version anyway for the simulation part. By the way, you can of course get this project file if you want on Patreon, and you can watch, as I said, the other parts of the simulation tutorial of the art directing splashes tutorial on Patreon as well. So let's continue and let's add some seeds to our strawberry. And that's actually really simple because we have already everything that we need. We need this scatter line, the sphere and the copy to points and nothing else. So let's grab these and copy them over, just alt drag them over. And let's take a look what we got now. And now we have these very ugly looking things here because that's just the shape of our sphere now. But we can turn this into seeds uh, really easily. So first of all, before I do anything here, let's go into my seed. Let's turn off this strawberry for a moment and shift W to see this. And now let's take a look how we can shape it. So the seed is definitely flatter on the Y axis. So I have to turn it down. I think that these have a shape that's approximately maybe like this. Then I also think that they are a little bit thicker on the Z axis, something like that. And I will take a look at these here. And they are a little bit tapered towards the end, as you can see here. So they have a tip here at the bottom, and I also want to do that. So we can use a taper effect. So let's again use the linear taper and put it on after our sphere, and let's activate it. And now we can leave it on the set axis. I will just shift it a little bit down, like so, and increase the taper effect now. Let's see. And now I just shift around my my seed until I get what I want. But I actually want to make it negative because that's what I want. And then I just change the direction here to minus one. Yeah, that's better. And now let's shift this until we affect the right side. Yeah, something like that. So I think that this could already be quite good. Maybe the taper is a little bit too strong that could work. And I could also add a little bit more detail in here. So maybe we set this to four, then it looks a little bit nicer. So let's take a look. Could this be a seed of a strawberry? I think yes, it could. We will see. We will just place it inside our strawberry and then we will see. Now, of course, they are way too big and let's merge these two together to see them all together. So I merge my VDB mesh and my seeds. And the cool thing is that this scatter and align tool creates a p scale attribute, as you can see here. Here it's a p scale. That's why I also didn't care about the size of my sphere. So I didn't change the size here because the scatter and align tool handles that for us. And we can manipulate this p scale easily by using an attribute adjust float node, put it after the scatter and align node. And this is by default set to p scale. And now we can just multiply with a constant and if we activate this now you see they are gone but if i increase this now they will come back and if i go to my merge so that i can see everything together 
we can now determine the size that we need for our seats. So I think that a value of maybe, let's see, 0.4 could work. Let's take a look at that from a little bit of a distance. Let's turn off our wireframe for now. And yeah, if I compare that, you see, it doesn't look that bad. So that's quite good. Maybe we can make them a tiny bit bigger. But what we could also do is give them some variation. Instead of multiplying it by a constant, I could multiply it by a random value and set this, let's say, to 0.35 and 0.45. And now they will just, yeah, slightly random in size. Maybe I go a bit higher, 0.4 and 0.48. And just put in something like that. Uh, now they feel a little bit too big. <laughs> That's something sometimes a little bit difficult to find the right values. So maybe we just go down a tiny bit more. And 3, 8, 2, 4, 3. Yeah, that looks nice. But I think that they are not really positioned correctly, as you can see here, because of course I modeled in my dents and my Align scatter align tool is not taking these into account. Let me move these up here actually. So I have to counter this by using a peak node. And I can put in the peak node right after the attribute adjust float where I adjust my p scale. So let's take a look at that. Or actually, let's take a look at the merge and just select that. And if I bring this down now very slightly, so offset it back. Then we will see they will move into the dents. And I want them to more or less collide a little bit with the surface. So let's see how this looks like. And I think that this looks really good. I'm quite satisfied with this look now. OK, so the next step is that we add more details to this area up here. And usually there is this dent when you rip out these leaves, because I do not want to model the leaves. I don't want to have the leaves in my simulation part. That's a little bit too complicated. And so I want to just model in a dent here. I could do this again with our sculpting tool, but yeah, that's not that good and it's not procedural. So we'll just model a shape and then just subtract it from our mesh. And to do this, so to model that, let's use a cylinder. Uh, actually, it's called tube in Houdini. Sometimes I forget this. So let's go to tube. And now let's take a look how we can set this up. So first of all, of course, the radius is way too big. So let's scale it down to something like that. Then I want to scale down the height, of course, because this should not be that big. Maybe 0 0.1 for now. And now let's transform it in place. And I want to make sure that I only transform it on Y for now. I will do the other transform, so I will shift it in place after I shaped it. And this just has to do with my taper, because again, I want to use a taper operation here now. So let's put it up here, just that we see how much we have to taper it in. And of course, I want to add more geometry, because right now it has not a lot of geometry. So let's go to our tube and increase the rows to something like 80, and increase the, uh, the rows and the columns to something like 10. That's fine. And now I can add in a taper effect. Again, this linear taper that we already used on the strawberry. Change it to Y. And now I want to set the capture length to 0.1 because this is exactly the height of my tube. And now I can just shift the origin. So until it is more or less, and I can also do that right here. I can go to capture, then I can shift it around here. Then we see exactly what it is capturing which is quite handy, even if it's quite difficult to see because of the template here. So let's just turn this off. I don't need it for now. So let's just focus on this one. OK, so let's take a look how this looks like. I think that the capture length is now too high. Yeah, I just changed this. Didn't want to change it. So let's say 0 0.1 again. And now let's move this up like so. Maybe make it a bit bigger that we have some room to work with here. OK, and now I can use this ramp again and I can start tapering this. So let's start tapering it down here and create something like that. Let's see how this looks like. Yeah, this doesn't look too bad. Then we have this step in here. And then it's going to smooth out. 
This probably is a little bit too high, but I can scale it later on. It's good for shaping this like so, and then we can scale it down a tiny bit. And maybe we make this here actually a little bit flatter. This could work a bit better. So I just want to create something like this, a shape like this. And now I take all of these again and I will smooth them out and choose another interpolation. And I want to use, let's say, Bezier maybe. No, that's too smooth. So let's change it to monotone cubic. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Now I want to turn this into a volume actually. So to turn it into a volume, I have to fill these holes and I will use a polyfill to do that. Uh, as you see now, it just fills these and it really doesn't matter how this looks like. We do not care about the geometry up here because we'll turn it into a volume in a moment. And I also want to distort it a bit using a mountain node because now it is way too uniform. So let's add in a mountain node. This is now way too much. So let's turn down this amplitude. This just has to do with the element size probably. So let's take a look if we make this a bit bigger. Yeah, that looks better. There's a bit, there's not enough geometry around the edges here probably. That's why this is getting a bit distorted on the side, but it really doesn't matter because as I said, I want to change or I want to turn this into a volume anyway. So let's see whether we can get away with it. Now it is a little bit distorted and not that uniform anymore. And that's already enough, I think. So now let's turn this into a VDB, VDB from polygons, as we did before. And I want to make sure that I use the same resolution as I did for my strawberry, which was 0.0075. So let's go in here, copy it over and paste it. Oops. Paste it in this one here. I could also do a relative reference if I want to change it later on, but for now that's fine. And now we can do a Boolean and I will do this during the VDB. And in VDB, it is called a VDB combine. So let's use the VDB combine node. And I want to do this before the smoothing. So right here, and this is my volume A and volume B. And now I can come in here and I can say, I want to have the difference of these two, or maybe it is the intersection. No, it should be the difference, but they are just lined up the wrong way. So we can do, let's see, just shift these inputs. I um, have to put this in here and this in here. Yeah, that's what I want. You see, now it is cut out of my, it is getting cut out of my strawberry. And if I put this into the VDB smooth, now this will be smooth. And now we can place it and shape it and do everything we need to do. But now I will add in a new transform and I will add it in right above my VDB here. Because otherwise, if I change it up here, then I have to change the whole tapering again and I don't want to do that. So let's do it like this. And let's just shift it over a bit, like so. Let's take a look how this looks like. It doesn't look too bad. Maybe it is a little bit too steep or too, too high, this cutout. So I will just scale it down on the Y axis a tiny bit, as you can see here. And now I can just move it up. Oh, this was the wrong direction. I want to move it up on Y a little bit. So now I just move it up to create a very smooth cutout here. So let's take a look at that and shift it maybe a little bit more over here. And now move it up a tiny bit more that we do not cut out that much. Something like that. That looks actually really not too bad. Okay, so if I go to my convert, let's shift this over here and let's take a look at my convert at my final mesh and turn off the grid. And I think that this looks quite nice. Looks quite natural. Of course, there's not so much detail, but later on when shading this, and I will actually not even do that in this tutorial part, I will maybe create a breakdown of shading and rendering this in the end. So this will be available on Patreon. Let's see how it goes. Then I will take a look at, at using bump maps to refine this a little bit. I think that it is still a little bit too high, so I want to make it smaller. So let's just set it to 0. 08 and now something oh yeah now it just disappeared into my strawberry so let's take a look at that and let's transform it up here again so let's go to the vdb combine 
and transform it up on Y. Yeah, now it disappeared a bit inside. Okay, this should be better now. Let's take a look. Yep, this is better. Just put it up a tiny bit more. Okay, I could also take a look where I have to rotate it maybe a little bit to match the shape a little bit better. Yeah, that's definitely fine. Good. Now we have a strawberry. So the last step of this tutorial is to colorize these. And there's a pretty neat trick to colorize objects using the geometry. So of course the strawberry should be red, but you also know that under these leaves they are usually more or less white or very bright, very desaturated pink. So let's try to mimic this and let's create a color node here. And I do not want to be too precise here, so I do not want to create the final colors now. I can do this while rendering, I can remap the colors, but for now I will just put in a red that is more or less acceptable as, uh, yeah, as a strawberry red, so something like that, maybe shift it a bit towards the, the yellows here, towards the oranges, that's fine. And then I want to also colorize my stem here. So let's actually, I could actually organize these. I started organizing it here and then I just stopped organizing it. Yeah, that's what I usually do. <laughs> but before I, I prepare it for your download, I promise that I will organize it nicely with boxes and everything. So let's colorize this tube also because we can use this actually to colorize the strawberry or to create a, a gradient between these colors. But before I'm talking here, let me just show you this. So let's add in a color here after the transform node, I want to add it. And this should be white, but not totally white. Maybe we'll go in a slight orange direction here as well. So very slightly only. And maybe this can be a little bit more reddish. So something like that. It's nearly not noticeable. And as I said, these will not be the final colors. This is just for visualization now. And what I can do now is I can use uh, attribute transfer. And this is really a, a neat little trick that I like to do sometimes it can save you from creating uvs by just creating the colors on a point level so let's attribute transfer this from actually this geometry here and i want to no sorry wrong way around i want to transfer from this geometry from our stem to our to our strawberry and by default this will just override the red value, the red color, but this just has to do with the conditions here. So if you take down the distance threshold now and take it down far enough, then you see we get this, I oh, have to take it down like this, then you see we get this nice color mapping here. And now you can blend it a bit, so let's add in some blending and then we get this really naturally looking, this naturally looking color here. Okay, so now let's add in a color also for our seeds. So let's add in a color node and let's just add this in for our seeds. And our seeds are this greenish, greenish, brownish thing. If we take a look at our, they are nearly yellow actually. So let's go for something like that maybe. Yellowish something. Yeah, maybe this is the color that could work. Let's take a look at it. And funny wise, I cannot see my colors now. Not sure why this is. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, here we have them. And yeah, this is a little bit too greenish. So we have to go more into the more into the yellows here, actually. So more into this direction here, I think. Let's take a look. And for now, this is okay. As I said, these are not the final colors and we will change these later anyway. There's one more thing that I actually forgot and that I just realized when taking a look at these seeds. I think they are orientated way too uniform. So they are now pointing all down straight along the y-axis and I want to give a little bit of variation here. So this is something that I actually just forgot. And we can do this in the scatter and align tool and there is this minimum and maximum angle and we can set this to minus three and plus three, for example, then these have a slight offset, as you can see here. And we can actually do the same for our 
dense because this will create a little bit more of a natural look. So let's set this to minus five and five maybe that we even have a bit more offset here. And you see this looks immediately a little bit more natural. Yeah, and I definitely like that. Now, as a final step, let's save out this strawberry model to disk so that I can later on use it in my simulation project. And therefore I will use a file node and I want to create two separate versions. I want to create one high resolution version and a low resolution version. The low resolution version will be without the seeds and I want to use this as a collider object in my simulation later on. So let's create the file node and call it strawberry high resolution. That's the first one. And create a second one here that we just call low resolution. Now the low resolution should be only the berry. So I just go from this group that I just created and put it in here and take a look at that. And now I will deactivate this node for a moment and set it to right. Now I set up the path and I will just go to my geometry directory and select strawberry high resolution. I already saved this out once before. And of course you can also get these files so they will be included in the project download. And now as soon as I activate this file, the Houdini will save out the file to this path. So let's do that, activate it, and now it is already saved. And I can control that by changing it to read. And if I now cut the connection, you see this is now a separate file that's actually reading from the disk. There's only one thing that I forgot. I wanted to save out the low resolution, but I didn't reduce the polygons. So I have to do this again. Sorry for that. Um, let's come in here. Let's link it up again. Let's go to right. And in between here, of course, I want to poly reduce it. So poly reduce. And let's take a look how far we can go here. We have around 77,000 polygons. So I can really go lower here, about 20% probably. Let's take a look what this does. And I think for, yeah, as a collider object, this will still work. So how many do I have here? 15,000, yeah, that's fine. So let's just do this again here, write the file and activate it. And now I wrote out the right file. Again, I can check this by go to read, disconnect it. And you see now I have my low resolution file saved to disk. So I can delete both of these files because I don't need them in my scene. Now I will do the same with my high resolution, but here I want to have everything included. So I will go from my null that I created in here to this, deactivate it, go to write, search the directory, go to high resolution, accept, activate the file, and now it is safe to disk. If I deconnect it, disconnect it and take a look, you see now my high resolution version is actually saved to disk. Okay, so this is it with this part of the tutorial. As I said, I will prepare this file a little bit nicer. You can download it on Patreon. If you want to see the next parts where I show you how to create and how to art direct fluid splashes using vellum fluids, then please check out Patreon. So far, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.